Hi, this is MC Shetty for a new episode in my modding tutorial. This is episode 10 and last episode uh, we made the front panel look nice and <coughs> sorry in this mode let me show you a problem. Let's actually to make things easier like that. Here we have a nice uh, furnace and I want to move it. So I break it. Let's put it over here. Oh, what's happened? It has lost all its power and it has no items anymore. So what's the problem? The problem is that when you break a block, everything inside it is just gone by default. You can go the vanilla way and just drop the contents. That's easy to do, but that's not what I want to do. I would like to remember the contents in the dropped item. That's what we're going to work on this episode. So to do things uh, the vanilla way, you just, this is the furnace code from vanilla, you just override break block, you check your tile entity, and you drop all inventory items with inventory helper. And yeah, that's something for comparators, that's not important here. So that's easy, but uh, we want to do it a bit better. So again I prepared some code. First what we want to do, let me copy these uh, three things uh, and put them right here. So what's happening here? Yeah, this isn't working yet, we will fix that soon. Um, when a block is harvested, when the player tries to harvest the block, this is called. And the normal procedure is that uh, the block is harvested, the tile entity is destroyed, and then get drops is called. Uh, but we want our tile entity to be still there when get drops is called because we want to remember what's in the tile entity in the actual drops. So to do that you can override removed by player and if the we'll harvest is set to true we return true to prevent uh, the block from being deleted so we don't cause uh, this one which would actually remove the block, so we don't do that. Instead, uh, we delay it, and later on, uh, this is in harvest block that this happens. Um, so, hold on. So first harvest block is called, the normal harvest block uh, would uh, drop block as item here harvest set so drop block as item it would get drops how does it work again okay so everything happens in try harvest block which is called when the player attempts to harvest block if you're not in creative that's this case uh, so it will first call remove block normally, that's a normal procedure. Remove block to re thus removed by player. And the default implementation sets uh, clears the block at this point. But we have over oh, uh, extended on uh, what is it removed by player. And we return true instead. We don't do the default behavior. So that means that our block is not removed. 
Then after that harvest block is called, which we'll call the get drops in this method. So we override harvest block. This we'll call the get drops here. And finally after that we set our block to air. So we delay uh, the setting of air to after the drops have been called, which means that our tile entity will still be there. Of course that means we need that write restorable to MBT. Um, yeah, let me just create it. What this means actually is uh, we don't want what this code will do is we, if we have a fast furnace uh, we get the item stack that represents the furnace, the dropped item we make a new tag compound and we s remember everything that we need to remember in the item stack uh, to this tag compound and we set it to the dropped uh, block that's what happens here so uh, <coughs> basically uh, we remember in the dropped item stack the NBT that we need to remember we don't want to do uh, this because that remembers a bit too much for example the the position of the block is also in the NBT and since we are probably going to set our block elsewhere that's not uh, what we want to do okay so the easiest way that I find is to use extract oh. right restore oh. NBT so in this case you can choose what you want to remember in this case we I decide to remember everything, so the items in the input inventory, items in the output inventory, how far we are and the energy that we have. So that happens here. Now we also need a method in block to restore our uh, tile entity. And that's on block placed by. So first we let the block place uh, normally in the world after which our tile entity is there we check if we have a tag compound in our stack which is a stack that was dropped earlier and if possible we restore our uh, fast furnace with that information so that means that we also need this and this should work let's try it out okay so um, first let's put uh, bit of power in it that's enough then put some iron ore in it and break it let's see fast furnace let's move it here and it has its power still and its items so it has worked Okay, now that's good, but one extension I would like to see in the tooltip of the item when you have picked up the furnace, um, how, what it actually contains, some information about the contents. And that is also possible because there is a nice uh, add information method. I'm going to call. Actually, we need a bit more. Yeah. 
So add information is what is called uh, to add extra items to the tooltip uh, when your mouse hovers over an item in your inventory. So we get our uh, tag compound, we check if it's not no, and then we get all the information that we want to show, uh, the energy, and we we just want to count how many items there are in the input and output buffers, not uh, show them exactly. So we do that uh, by this uh, tag items. Um, so if you go check deserialize NBT to the implementation of that, you can see you can see that it is stored in items. And okay um, so then we have this code this is a way to uh, make a localized message so we have a key for our message and it we localize it with three parameters energy size input size output we have a, uh, a regexp because uh, we want th to use this as a way to indicate uh, colors and this is the uh, unicode, unicode for uh, that specific character that uh, allows you to change the color of the text basically this corresponds um, to this here you see that code again And these are all the, the the codes that you can use, and so you can give uh, colors. Um, and we also want to split, uh, allow for multi-line tooltips. So there's a string tooltips, but split, where we transl our entire translated string from the language file. We uh, split it by new line. And every line is added with collections that add all to the tooltip. So to make this work, we need to add an entry here as well. First, we need this. I will explain in a moment. So basically, if this is uh, in the first line of your language file, it will uh, you will be able to use this notation to split over multiple lines so what's happened here this is our key for the message it's always recommended to put your mod name in the key your mod id because otherwise you may get uh, collisions with other mods so that's this key here and we have three lines of output this corresponds to, if you go look this up, to green. The A corresponds to green. Energy with the first integer. So here you can use, for example, if you have strings, you can use this, but we use integers. Then green items, input to output. And F um, is white. So in white text, we say, we say fast furnace. So the advantage of this method by using new lines here is that you can, in another language for example, if you have a language file for another language, you can use more or less lines. Uh, so you don't have to change the code to change the number of lines. So let's try it out. Okay, let's see. So you see energy, 6020, items, one input, one output. So that's how this works. And this basically concludes our tutorial. And yeah, power is going down. And so see you next time for the next tutorial. Bye-bye.